good afternoon everyone it indeed is a great pleasure to be able to address you all though virtually i wish i could have addressed you uh, face to face but as you all know that now we are all living in a, a different world pandemic world so we had to do this uh, webinar you know, you know we had to do this as a webinar rather than a face to face uh, interaction so thank you all for joining on time i can see a lot of people about uh, you know number is going up uh, very rapidly about 260 as i see now almost to 70 now so thank you all for joining what really matters is a series of uh, webinar which kemp university press has been organizing as part of our initiative for supporting teachers with practical tips and subject matters and issues which matters to the most this first webinar uh, the first webinar in the series was held on 23rd september and the topic for that was motivation of teachers as you all know motivating teachers is the most difficult task in this time actually because now the teachers are uh, put into a lot of difficulties because of the covid uh, situations and all that so that was the topic we handled in the first webinar and the topic for today's webinar as you all know is bringing computational thinking in the classroom So I'm glad that you now we have a, a very distinguished uh, panelist here, very well experienced practitioners and teachers. But before I uh, invite our panelists to speak, I would like to give a bit of a context, I, you know, context to the seminar, you know, the webinar. Uh, why we choose this topic, computational thinking in the classroom, and more importantly, why is it, why, why does it matter to you as teachers and uh, your students actually? Like? as we all know the world is rapidly uh, changing it is becoming very unpredictable actually in fact even before the covid-19 pandemic disrupted our work and life digital revolution and globalization imposed huge challenges to individuals as well as societies schools and teachers need to prepare students to live and work in a world which they do not know actually in fact or we do not know a recent survey conducted by linkedin one of the uh, leading professional network organization about future of jobs indicated that 90% of the jobs for which we are preparing our students today are going to disappear in about 5 to 10 years time isn't it scary you know this this put us in you know all you know all educators like us in a very difficult situation this means as educators we have a huge responsibility of preparing our students for an unknown world critical thinking problem solving skills adaptability etc are some of the key skills for survival and growth in the digital age the cognitive ability and social skills which children learn in the early years of their education define much of their future potential therefore it is important for us to prepare our children with the skill sets for surviving and thriving in an increasingly unpredictable world in which they will be living in the traditional education system as we all know a good foundation in literacy and uh, numeracy were considered as a, a basic foundation for excelling in their education and later on in their career not anymore in fact uh, the, you know these the skills are still important literacy and numeracy is definitely important but it is also important that no a good foundation in digital literacy at early years of education is essential in the digital age computational thinking provides a framework for approaching a problem systematically by breaking down a complex task into a smaller understandable and achievable step as computing become an integral part of everything what we do understanding how computers work become an essential skill for our students to be future ready globally we recognize that computational thinking will be the key to succeed for all future careers it is therefore vital that we talk about it we talk about computational thinking and also why does the new education policy focus on computational thinking or coding and how do we bring this into teaching and learning process so on that note I now would like to introduce our first panelist, Mr. Vipul Shah. Uh, Vipul Shah is the head of education and skilling, Global CSR TCS. He is also head of CS Partshala, 
Bipul, my question to you around, uh, you know, is around uh, computational thinking. Obviously, that you know, the importance of computational thinking. But before that, you are, you have been principal scientist at Tata Consultancy Services at their software engineering lab for about 30 years. You had the Association of Computing Machinery India Education Initiative CS Parshala and also national coordinator for Bibras India Computing Challenge that is designate, uh, designed to get children excited about computer, computational thinking. My question to you, start with a quote from none other than Satya Nadella, the global CEO of Microsoft, uh, 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 now which is the, the leading company, you know, the IT company. Uh, and uh, she, uh, Satya has recently mentioned computational thinking will be in every aspects of our economy. India recognized the importance of, uh, of the same. The change of perception is very clearly visible in the recently in, you know, announced national education policy that aims to uh, make India a global knowledge superpower. So the policy mentioned that coding can be included in the curriculum. So the question in summary to you, uh, Vipul, is that why is computational thinking skills and coding a key priority area? Over to you, Vipul. Thank you, Govindan, and good afternoon to all. I would first of all like to congratulate Govindan, Manish, PT, and the entire team at Cambridge University Press for organizing the What Really Matters webinar series. And I'm honored to be on the panel. I think while he was describing uh, it was, uh, my uh, profile, I think you would have noticed he spoke about compute, compute, being a researcher, being a computer scientist, and a different role in TCS right now. So. As a computer scientist, I was not very happy with uh, the ICT curriculum that my son was learning in school. Now, this was many years ago. And this is what really motivated me to ex explore how computing can be taught differently. CS Parshala was an important step towards that. And I'm excited with the possibilities that my current role in TCS offers. As he mentioned, the question that most will have is why computational thinking? Why coding? I mean, I think he spoke about how technology is changing at a rapid pace, uh, perhaps now more so than ever before. This will create a skill gap in the students coming out uh, uh, of our education system. You know, I had an opportunity to take a short ride in a car called Stanley at Stanford University in 2005. The car later in the year won the DARPA challenge and became the first autonomous car to complete the earmarked uh, route without a driver. So we've been hearing all about Google car and other cars, and we have come a long way with autonomous vehicles. And it's just been 15 years, right? It takes a long time for any technology to evolve. And look at the kind of progress we have made. So when and not if this technology becomes mainstream, think of the disruption it will cause. What will happen to the trucking industry? I mean, what will happen to the truckers? What about the roadside dhabas? What about all the ancillary industries, right? So how do we prepare our students and give them a strong foundation that will help them ride this, the changes that are coming their way? I mean, the key skills, as he mentioned earlier, required to be successful in every profession are problem solving and critical reasoning. Computational thinking as a paradigm is designed to help develop these skills and has therefore been included into the mainstream curricula in many countries. And India has joined them with the national education policy 2020, recognizing it as a fundamental skill. Efforts like CS Parchala from ACM India, Ignite My Future in Schools from TCS, Coding Sandpit from Cambridge University Press, make it possible for students to develop the skills. And you know, the beauty of it, they do it without them requiring to use computers through engaging activities. And several years ago, the national grid in UK was witnessing sudden surge in demand that lasted for three to five minutes. You may know that such a spike can impact the grid frequency, cause disruptions, can play havoc with your appliances. So, and you cannot crank up power generation at a very short notice. Uh, so they usually buy power from other countries, but you need to plan for that. You need to know how long would you need it. So initially while exploring, ex analyzing this, there were no clear patterns that were emerging. It seemed very random at different times of the day. On some days it would appear, some days not. It would, there would be no surges, no spikes. So they did some further analysis and it helped them identify the patterns. You know what? The surges happen at the end of either important football games or popular TV serials. So what would happen is the Brits being tea lovers would turn on their electric 
kettles at the end of a game to boil water so that they could make tea. And this would generally take three to five minutes, right? And when few people do this, obviously nothing would happen. But when a large percentage of your population does it at the same time together, it results in a huge surge in demand in a short period of time. So the, this example, I, I brought this out just to highlight the need to train our students on collecting, uh, analyzing, and looking for such patterns, uh, visualizing and identifying such patterns. You may say, you know, a great example, but how common are these requirements for such skills? Now take a moment and think about it. When you head out for work or leisure, you select a route to reach your destination. What do you base the route that you select on? Is it the day? Uh, is it a weekday? Do you think is it a weekend? Is it a national holiday? Does it depend on what time of the day is, it is? Right, isn't it? Why? Because you're all aware of the traffic patterns. I mean, during peak and non-peak hours, how is the traffic on weekends, on holidays? So what you did unknowingly was to process information. Now, can we train our students on this skill so that what you did unknowingly, they can do so knowingly and in all kinds of situations? This is precisely what computational thinking helps them do. Programming is nothing but giving instructions to a human or a computer to get a job done. By the way, all of us are programmers, right? Whether it is setting up alarm clocks or programming the microwave, we have been programming most of our life. It's just that we do not know that it was programming since we are not trained in it. And, and perhaps that's the reason we're not necessarily good at it. And the classic example, which I like to give all the time, is about giving directions. When somebody asks you how to reach your home or how to get somewhere, uh, we, we do this, right? We have all experienced this. We have been through this. We have asked people for direction. Especially in this pandemic time, you have your groceries delivered online. You have your pizza delivery agent coming, calling you and asking you for directions. Now tell me honestly, how many of you are ever happy with the directions you receive when you ask somebody for directions? And do you think the person at the other end when you are giving directions is happy with the directions you give? Why should something as trivial as giving directions and something that all of us do and have been doing for years be so difficult? What we do not have is a common language to express directions. We are not precise in our instructions. And that's where a programming language helps. The programming language makes it possible to provide such precise instructions. Unfortunately, we end up teaching languages to students and not programming. We don't need fancy languages in schools to teach programming. We can do so simply by asking students to list down the steps to perform some task or an activity. It could be as simple as getting up from the desk and walking to the classroom door. What we are trying to teach them are principles of programming, like sequencing, conditionals, loops, and this can be taught the simple language which has instructions like turn left, turn right, take one step, take 10 steps. Uh, if you hit an obstruction, whatever. So it, it conditional, et cetera, right? So again, this is an approach that is taken by CS Parshala and Coding Sandberg. And once the students are able to master the principles, then they can move to a concrete language. That's it. You don't need to train them on a dozen languages. Just one language is sufficient. In fact, some schools take pride in teaching plethora of programming languages. By the, student, by the time students pass class 12. It's not really required. And often programming is confused with computational thinking. Some say, oh, we have been teaching programming languages to our students, and so we are already teaching C2. If that were the case, let me share some statistics with you. This is put out by Aspiring Minds, and uh, it's quite worrying. So apparently, less than 5% of, of our students, these are the, from the engineering colleges, can write correct programs. And less than even half of them can write correct and efficient programs. Now, if you were really doing a good job of teaching programming, why is this the case, right? The missing link is providing them with a strong foundation, developing logical and critical reasoning skills so that students can solve problems. And programming enables them to realize such a, a solution that they build. You can use it to simulate science experiment. They can do a lot more with it, applying it. So, I think this is where we need interventions. Empowering teachers in computational thinking is critical as they play a key role in training a diverse student population. However, this has so far been getting you know, all about getting them familiar with 
either online or digital technology and the effective use of tools. The question we end up discussing is what technology and what programming languages should uh, be used to train uh, teachers and therefore then, then the students. Whereas the questions we should be asking are what are the strategies and techniques they should learn to engage with students and train them on what are good questions that the students should be asking to solve problems. So what really matters is that NEP has recognized and has laid an emphasis on problem solving, mathematical and computational thinking, as well as programming. I think we are in for some exciting times ahead. Uh, that we had a role uh, to play in making this happen uh, and making it part of the policy makes it even more satisfying for me. Thanks, Govindan. Thanks, Vipul. And that's that's really useful insight. Actually, in fact, and you know that in, in such a such a simple, nice language. Actually, you know, because you know, I'm, I'm I consider myself as a technology. Uh, what do you call it? You know that no. Uh, I, I don't call myself as a native, you know, that you know, a migrant, technology migrant. And uh, sometimes, you know, that you now I feel intimidated, you know, when I hear computing and programming, coding and all. But what you're saying is that, you no, know, it is not about programming or, you know, doing a high level program, you know, uh, uh, writing a program. It can be applied in any part of your life, actually. And, you know, more importantly, this is a skill. It needs to be taken as a life skill required for, uh, uh, you know, every every student and every young adult, you know, moving into this unpredictable world, which I mentioned. So thank you for uh, giving that input. I'm sure our uh, participants uh, would uh, would have definitely liked. I can see a lot of questions coming around that actually. So let's move on to the next panelist. Uh, we have uh, as our next panelist uh, Kavita Swangvi, Principal CNM School and N.D. Parekh Pre-Primary School. As a school leader, your practical advice always inspires teachers. You are a STEM expert, worky teacher ambassador and teach SDGs ambassador and many others. You have been one of the pioneers in adopting computational thinking for your students. You are rational for this decision and methodology of how to bring computational skills in teaching and learning within the classroom would be beneficial to all. So. My question to Kavita is, everything that we touch or interact with today as digital natives, we know it is not magic. At some point of time, each one of us has said, only if my computer can talk to me or a, 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 you know, my computer can think like me. In fact, you know, some of the artificial intelligence enabled devices like uh, Alexa already mm -hmm. talked to, you, uh, talk to us, yeah. in fact. So we do not understand what language or, you know, or, you know or we do not understand that it will have some degree of computational thinking when those devices talk to us actually. But the question is that now what language, what, what is the language and how can schools get students familiar with it? Because that's a challenge actually. So your question, uh, you know, that's a question to you, Kavita. Okay. So thank you so much for, um having me on the panel, Govindan, and uh, the entire Cambridge team. So uh, let me tell you that in 2018, uh, as I was doing my STEM research also with um, linking teachers to industry and students to industry and working out the results, I realized that industries have gone way ahead. And education is really lacking behind. So how to make sure that our students are at pace with the people when they have the respective skills to get into industry many years later? So Govindan, you've already spoken about 90% of the students getting into completely new jobs. That is what World Economic Forum has been talking about. Even before the industrial revolution has already set in, we have AI, ML, BR, we have every single thing around us. Do we know how to use any of it? How to connect it to our concepts in our class? Or we're still using the same textbooks that we were using 10, 15 years back. So how to equip our students with skills, abilities, ensure that they have a sound future, they have a job at hand later on. So for that reason, and looking at the research results that I had, I wanted to bring in a subject which got students thinking about literacy, uh, you know, new, uh, computational skills, mathematical ability, coding, all of these I wanted them to think about it. Fortunately, you had an orientation where you were introducing coding sandpit. And I had gone there and I was watching it and I saw the code monkey game happening out there. 
And I realized this is something I need to bring back to my school. But how do I bring it back? Because I first need to test it. Everybody, whenever you bring something back to school, you test it with a small population. You see whether it works and then you extend it to the entire population. Because we are a school of more than 3,000 students. So first, we started with just fifth to eighth standard, bringing in computer coding sandpit. We started it, we didn't have a separate subject initially because coding was something completely new. Neither the parents were aware of what coding actually entailed, coding, computational skills entailed, neither the management, neither the teachers. So it had to be all of us going, to, uh, you know, hand in hand, step by step. From fifth to eighth standard, we first started the textbooks. And fortunately, the textbooks are so beautifully aligned because it goes from a gaming point of view. And from fifth to eighth, we saw that our students enjoyed doing the textbook more than the mathematics. So that gave us some sort of confidence that yes, we are going on the right step. Now, how did we do it? We didn't have a separate period for code uh, for this entire coding sandpit. So we had this divided, the entire chapters in the book divided between the computer teachers and the maths teachers. So the maths teachers took up some of the topics and the computer teachers took up some of the topics to integrate it within their own curriculum and bring it forth. And it worked like magic because not only it became the responsibility of computer teachers, but it also brought in my mathematics teachers who were also teaching science. Next year, this current year, we took it from first standard eight standard and also brought in code monkey now when we brought in and we had discussions with all of you all in the month of february we never ever thought in the month of march we would actually have a lockdown so we wanted to bring in code monkey but we couldn't get the teachers to get trained physically for any of those things so it was a virtual platform with more than 2000 students entailed and all the teachers coming together but Technology has been so, so forgiving because even if we were not knowing anything, within a few days, it made us confident of knowing every single thing. And we were able to take it from the first standard to the eighth standard seamlessly. And let me tell you, now we have created a separate period called as coding. So in that, we have two periods, one period a week, two periods a month goes to the computer teachers, two periods a month go to the mathematics teachers, divided among themselves so there's collaboration happening it's not just one teacher's responsibility but every teacher along the way realizes that computational skills is something that has to be ingrained it has to be developed and not only does computer in the it teachers getting trained now even the mathematical teachers are getting trained slowly it will pass on to in first and second standard the class teachers are doing it now why are we doing it because it is not just an aspect of coding that you spoke about it is an aspect of logical thinking analytical thinking which even teachers are enjoying you know sharpening their skills upon because it's been so many years that they have left behind their studies now coming with this new subject they are exploring they are understanding they are experimenting and when they are doing it the students are also enjoying talking to the teachers and say you know i have reached level 75 of code monkey where have you reached they are having this kind of conversation between themselves and obviously my students outshine the teachers in this because they are much better than this this world this world of technology actually they are owning it more than us but what has really happened right now is there's a synergy between the entire school and that synergy is really supporting us to develop these kind of skills that we want to develop in our students prepare them for a completely unknown future so yes this is what has been our journey in uh, CNM school from 2018 to present 2020. And I'm sure that we are waiting to come back physically because we want to see, actually, we know the students are enjoying, but we want to see that physical joy and see that experimenting and talking to the friend and say, you know, I have reached here. Where are you? So this is not just for coding. This is the computational skills because you play a lot of games. You're doing a lot of analysis. Uh, you're doing programming. Many people told us earlier when you wanted to start something like this, why don't you go for a programming thing? And we said, we don't want to just do programming. We want to actually building skills. And the skill building is why we have taken this entire package of not just 
uh, online program, but also a physical program. And we also have a students participating in a lot of inter-school activities, which are building on computational skills to support them think logically and analytically. This is our main uh, funda of taking up the entire thing, and implementing it in our school. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, no, that, 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 that's a very, very useful insight into your own experience. And, you know, I think, you know, many of our participants can relate it. And I think, you know, you know so the key message for me is that, you know, that, you know, this is not something, it's not a rocket science, you know, that you know, it can be learned by anyone. Yes. And, you know, I think, you know, we all, you know, stand to benefit that, you know, if we have a culture wherein that, you know, that you know, we learn from each other, you know, we can even learn from students, isn't it? Yes. So I think that that's a key message for me, actually. So that, thank you very much for that insight. Thank you so much. And we'll move on to the next panelist. Uh, okay, our next panelist is uh, Premlata Shaji, Vice Principal and Senior PGT, Computer Science, Cochin Refinery, Cochin Refinery School. Uh, you are an active uh, school leader. You are associated with Kerala Police and Amrita University of Technology for promoting cyber security awareness in schools. You are also a resource person for CBSE Teacher Training Unit. My question to you, uh, Premlata, is about the effectiveness of teaching computational skills and attitudes and tangible learning outcomes, and how can we witness the impact? How have you been bringing this into the school, into your schools, and the difference it has made in your students? Over to you, Premlava. Thank you, and a good evening to all those who are present here. I would like to uh, thank Cambridge University Press uh, for uh, getting me into this uh, panel discussion. So, what I thought best is that I. Can, I will do it by means of a presentation where you will get an insight and you can, I can also share pictures of how things are happening at the school. Uh, uh, nothing is better than seeing. Seeing is believing. That's what they say. So please allow me to share my presentation. Just give me a second, please. I hope my screen is visible. I need somebody to just let me know. Yes, uh, Pamela, I can see that. Clear. All right. Okay. Uh, so oh, what really matters in bringing computational thinking in classrooms is just an apt title for uh, today's uh, meeting that we see. Now, when I talk about uh, computational thinking. I think we'll just have a quick overview of the general definition. Umpteen definitions are there. Uh, general definition is what you see on the screen. It is a process that generalizes the solution to open-ended problems. So open-ended problems definitely means where we encourage meaningful answers. That means in the process, there will be some keywords that we are going to see in the next few slides about decomposition, data representation, generalization, and all put into a capsule is, uh, can be rightly said as being uh, falling under the definition of computational thinking. Now, the word computational thinking itself, if I split it as two, the computational part and the thinking part. Looking at the word computational, analyzing that very term, it refers to finding solutions. We analyze logic. We analyze the data that is going to be processed. That means we are thinking in terms of algorithms and its disposition. And the word thinking, when I say specifically, it is the activity, the activity of how to solve a problem. And that is why we put that as a combo word, computational thinking. That is uh, the analysis part and the process part together. When it works in a twin manner, we get the solution of, uh, we get to add the definition of uh, computational thinking. Now, all of us are aware, the four C's of the 21st century, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, creativity. And I, I personally don't feel why we should not 
be considering C, that is the fifth C, as being computational thinking. Because many of problems, what we are seeing in real time can be analyzed and solutions arrive by bringing in the concept of computational thinking. So then why CT? Why computational thinking? The very need is that uh, the elementary and the secondary education needs to incorporate this concept of computational thinking. Teachers also have to be empowered because it is a, a, new, uh, a new school of thought, a new pedagogical approach where the cognitive ability of the child is being handled at a closer at a closer distance just like how mr uh, vipul did mention nep 2020 has a major uh, is, is putting computational thinking in its pipeline with a lot of significance that is it is transforming and creating a dynamic education system which is going to be fundamental for the progress of our country. It even talks about universalization of early childhood care and education. That is, these are the areas which comes under the ambit of our computational thinking too. Even the national mission has also laid stress on uh, uh, numeracy right from class three. So why is it that it is coming into relevance so much? It is because it is the in thing, the present mantra, as you say. So the creativity, problem solving competencies are the core skills. And when I say core skills, I'm talking to you in terms of both cognitive as well as metacognitive strategies. So there is nothing like teaching the child gets learned irrespective of whether he is a visual learner, an auditory learner, or a kinesthetic. So we find now there is a main challenge which is happening in schools. That is understanding the problem and generating the solution. So obviously, if there is a problem, we need to address the issue too. So the child should be taught to constantly look for data, find patterns, decompose the problem, and make it into smaller units and solve it. Teachers can also play, teachers definitely, they do play a very significant role by bringing in interdisciplinary learning into the classroom. And not only using scholastic tools, even co-scholastic tools can be used. This will promote their critical uh, thinking, then their reasoning skills. All this will definitely have a good end result. So what I mean is just summarizing with the past one or two minutes is what you see here. CT is all about this decision making. You learn about iteration, propositional logic, data encoding, Boolean logic, but it does not come explicitly. It comes in a subtle way. They don't, we, we don't make reference of any technical terms as such, but it gets done. So I'll just quickly take you through some of the uh, concepts that I have been using in my schools. I also did a basic study on how the schools in and around my area have been using CT and I thought I'll just capsule it so that you know that CT works well in an urban as well as a rural scenario. So as, as I'm reiterating again and again, it is omnipresent, it is everywhere and it is for everyone. Now this is typically the elements of CT, decomposition breaking a large job into smaller parts and in such a way that it is manageable and you are and you'll be able to arrive at solutions pattern recognition abstraction algorithm design these are the fundamental pillars of computational thinking now 
uh, we are using this in school and our uh, the material that we are using is from CS Patshala and we are also using coding sandpit. I can tell you for sure that it is now uh, two years of implementation of coding sandpit in our school and uh, over the years, over the past two years, I have seen a major change in the quality of the students. And I can just share the kind of activities also. That's what I'm doing in the next few uh, slides. Right. So uh, what ultimately it is all about is how you can make big challenges, which are uh, you can reduce it in terms of magnitude and make it simple quantitative and data centric problems, how it can be solved. And in effect, if we try to relate it at the end of the day, you talk about any professions, everything has an element of CD, may it be sensor based med medicine or computational contracts or any kind of data analytics. Now, uh, I don't if there are computer science teachers who are there across, maybe this is uh, some term which you would have heard what is called as a brute force method, what is uh, popularly known as the MCGW problem. Okay, I think that small caricature down there, what you see on the right hand side is actually showing you the problem that is there and how they are trying to, how the problem, uh, and how this problem can be resolved. So teachers, maybe you can just go ahead and just Google and find out more about the brute force method. It's an interesting uh, way, an interesting example, which will drill in this concept of computational uh, thinking. Now, this is with relevance to what we do in school. For grades three to five, we have CT uh, is being used and we have two periods a week. The children are put on to very interesting examples like the uh, uh, tessellation patterns. This is a reference. I'm referencing it specifically with the coding sandwich book where there are incomplete tessellations and these incomplete tessellations are, uh, I hope the screen is visible now. You can see the tessellations. The Yes, incomplete tessellations are given and students are asked to complete it, right? So what the child does in the process is he observes the pattern, he sees the repetition. So a logical and a cognitive development does take place. Now you can associate this with even now, those of you who are attached to CBSE schools, they are promoting a lot of art integrated learning, life skills. So we see a lot of relevance in this. Then about basic conditionals and Boolean logic. This is again something which I've extracted from the coding sandpit of class five, where through pictures, for example, a traffic signal is shown. And what is it that the child deciphers from that? In the background, he's learning about Boolean logic. The green light is flashed, the red light is flashed, the implications of it. So Boolean logic is happening there interpretation of signboards, then pictorial references, junk food, represent the good food with green and the junk food with red. So these are again pictorial representation where we are, the child is expressing information, labeling fruits. And down there you can see how they are even you getting used to doing small activities of encoding and decoding using zeros and ones. The chessboard, the chessboard game was something which was which children found very interesting. And they were able to decipher and find out how many squares will be there. So if I give them a two by two matrix and I ask them how many squares are there, they will physically go there and they will count the number of squares, one, two, three, four, and the whole, two, whole thing together gives you the five, right? Small formulas like this, first we uh, uh, were drilled them in, 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 they were put into these kind of small activities. They increase the number of rows and the columns progressively. And without much 
effort, they were able to find out the total number of squares which will be there in that matrix. Pattern recognition is something which children always enjoy. May it be pattern in words or may it be patterns in numbers, right? All of this, uh, what my observation is that children observe the situation very keenly, they recognize and they enjoy uh, deciphering complex patterns. And in the process, they uh, not only develop their English language, they also help, it also helps in memorizing. There were activities like what we did, like recalling rhymes. We asked them to recall rhymes which are, uh, which are where the pattern is the same or speak out words which are sounding alike. So they were saying something like tension, action. So the, they, were, they were finding some pattern in words. And even by way of poetry too, a small poetry was given and they had to pick up all the statements that rhymes. And they each had to be given a separate code. So all, as you can see on the right hand side, there were two lines which were of the same repetition that is they found that through it all to catch you when you fall when you fall so it is rhyming there so the pattern similarities is established sudoku is again something which children really love to start off in smaller classes we go for a smaller matrix and to big for bigger classes they're even uh, taken to larger uh, to, to the larger order they even integrated with the Word and Excel, and some of them even go, as, as I've just mentioned here, they even put in, they integrate some formulae also into Excel and to see how this Sudoku implementation can be done. Number pyramid is something again. See, all this knowingly, unknowingly, by playway method, some uh, problem solving uh, methodology is being pushed in. Counting combinations. So these are some activities which we do out in school, right? We give them a, a code word. You, we want all the students in the pattern B, G, B, G. So immediately they, they team up that way. So when that activity takes place, it is a, a real commotion in the class. It gives an almost a feeling like how I've mentioned. It's a playground atmosphere there. We have children running all over the place. And so you won't find anybody sulking in one corner. Everybody is put to task. Another thing which children loved is that is using this thing called as arithmogen. And this, what I, my observation is, as well as maths teachers, I've also said, their concepts of addition and subtraction have really uh, come out well. Their basics are also improving simply because these small activities are brought in to the classroom. Scratch has also been dealt with in, from right from class three. Now this is providing an opportunity for the children to find out new and innovative ideas. Now, since it is a GUI interfacing, they give the command and immediately they see the object also behave, uh, obeying their instructions. So it is all the more, it is all the more interesting for the child because they're doing some on-screen coding. Tangrams is another way by which we found a lot of good feedback coming from teachers where they it's a complete hands-on activity. They have to rack their brains. A good in the process, a good hands and eye motor skill development takes place. And uh, we also gave them opportunities to reason out which are the other areas where we can use tangrams. And then they came up with the idea of kites and house, etc. So like that, the atmosphere in the classroom is also very good. And these are some just uh, general tips for teachers uh, to provide, uh, that is, as far as possible, avoid providing answers directly. Let them explore. Encourage the, the students, the teachers also. These three questions are very attractive as far as I'm concerned. What if you were to? The other part of it is extremely beautiful. You can add anything to the to the latter part of it. How would you have you considered? See, the other part of it is is conveying a lot of information. It can be deciphered differently. And the tips for parents, if there are parents in this audience, I would suggest that you can do all these visit these websites. 
these are good things which will promote the creativity of, stu of students. And the outcomes. We found students were able to establish the interdisciplinarity between different subjects. Even the grades of the poor academic performers has we found it did improve. And they, uh, they started reasoning out more quantitative and data centric problems. And the best part, which I, I really admire is that even students with learning disabilities, they started participating actively in that class. So for all this, the teacher is the key person. And as I've been saying in the past two minutes, past few minutes, the outcome which I saw, what happened over the two, past two years is that improved logical, critical and analytic thinking, the problem solving skills have improved, their systematic ap approach has improved and best and above all, patience and perseverance. They have become a little more patient in their ways. A lot of challenges are there ahead, right? It's a new skill set. And especially with non-computer science teachers, it is a difficult task. And another thing which I found is that getting the age appropriate resource material was also a big concern. Then the dispute, whether we should be bringing CT as a subject in school or whether it should be blended with any subject called math or science or computer science. And for CBSE in class 11 and 12, CBSE has included a topic called in computer science called computational thinking where all these things, what I've been talking about, the four pillars, they have to really work on it. So the techniques which teachers have to use is also becoming a concern. So our experience with CT has been amazing. We've been doing a lot, doing a lot of interesting puzzles, projects, et cetera. And, lot of, and especially with the hyperactive children, we were able to get them do the jobs much faster than we expected. That was a motivation for many of us. I would also like to share the experience what our special educator also said. The, who uses these tools? I have shared the uh, coding sandwich books with her. So she, hand, she shares it in her classroom where children with, uh, with special needs are attended to. Our school has an ATL lab and uh, a lot of students do enjoy working on this computational thinking aspect. So this is some good web links for those who are interested, just sharing a few pictures of what happened in our classrooms live and just wrapping up all what computer, computational thinking is about decomposition, patterns, iterations, algorithm, all comes in its, it, it will come in a composed manner. It comes in a sequential order without, and it happens in a natural order too. And the way forward, we need to do a lot of research on the effects of CT. And the need of the art is to sensitize more educators on the importance of CT. Thank you. Thank you, Premalada. That's been very, very useful presentation. Uh, there's a lot to take directly. In fact, I'm sure that our uh, participants will definitely find it useful. Uh, in the interest of time, you know that now I'm moving quickly because we are running a bit behind schedule because we also want to give some time for uh, Q&A. So we, though we scheduled this uh, webinar until 4.30, if, uh, if, if this is uh, convenient to our panelists as well as uh, participants, we plan to extend it by 15 minutes so that now we have some time for Q&A. So with that note, I now introduce uh, our uh, uh, next panelist, Minashi Uberol, Educational Evangelist and CEO of The Pedagogics. As a Microsoft Certified Educator, MI Master Trainer, MI Fellow and Adobe Education Leader, you work to build teacher capacity in using new methodologies and developing new skills. You have also worked with Cambridge for training programs on coding sandpit. It would be helpful for teachers to understand that bringing computational thinking in the classroom is simple and doable. So my question to you, uh, Minakshi, is currently we, we don't have many teachers trained in computational thinking skills. How do we build capacity 
so they can provide relevant engaging and meaningful computer computational thinking experience for their students over to you minachi thank you so very much uh, very warm welcome to all those who have been listening so patiently i will directly go on to address mr govindan's uh, question in the interest of time so what i would like you uh, to share with you is that for over about a decade now i've been into teacher training space and i feel that you know uh, there is a lot of scope Uh, as has been said by one of our participants as well that how do you reach out to the rural areas but i think it's more about uh, what what is what is the core of teacher training so the core of the teacher training lies in uh, three major components uh, and that is creating an attitude towards uh, accepting and learning which is creating a mindset around it two is developing skill sets that are required and three and the most important one is how do i take it to my classroom now if you look at these three skill sets and you look at the questions in the chat window you'll directly make a connection so uh, for, to me what is most important in computational thinking is the problem statement right now in front of me how will we enable these teachers how will we reach out to the last teacher in the room to say uh, computational thinking is is something that is doable and you need to bring it to your classrooms so mr govindan has said that there are no jobs or uh, guarantees as to what we are going to have tomorrow so if we are uncertain about the jobs i think it's very important for every school leader and educationist to pause and think about how to train these teachers who are going to empower the students of tomorrow because if we do not uh, address the problem of empowering these teachers i think we are we are somewhere lagging uh, behind in 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 preparing the entire generation towards that tomorrow so for this let me take computational thinking as one of my uh, uh, this this has my problem statement and take the process of computational thinking here let's say my, uh, uh, let me try and decompose this problem so the first step to computational thinking is decomposing let me decompose this problem into saying let's see what the problem is the problem is that it's not that the teachers don't want to learn it's just that there is less of accessibility how do i reach to the last teacher two where is the time look at the way we have actually i would actually want to pause here to clap and applaud the efforts of all the teachers who have in the past few months just turned around the education system and we have actually accelerated uh, much years ahead of us ourselves and we ourselves built those skills we have equipped ourselves into those uh, issues that were actually standing stagnant for in front of us for many years so here we are trying to see that the teacher says that the teacher doesn't have time then to learn a new skill i will have to see how how they blend with my existing skills taking these problems and moving forward to patterns so what are the patterns that you see in tra teacher training problems the problems that you see are almost the similar you will have teachers who who will very very willingly sit down to learn in a 1 hour 2 hour 6 hour session or even a week session what about sustaining that interest what about taking it to the classroom and bringing it to life the problem is i don't have time to practice and i completely understand i'm not complaining as a trainer the next part is looking at prioritizing or abstracting prioritize what's important what is important for us as training institutes is that we should be able to provide the teachers the platform we should be able to open the mindsets towards it we should be able to break the problem into smaller or simpler doable steps and take it into the classroom and then we simply have a kind of an algorithm that runs which tells you uh, when you open your sessions open them by opening mindsets so that's exactly what we did we brought in uh, mr vipul shah to open the mindsets of educators towards computational thinking and the first thought that i had after listening to him was ah so that's computational thinking that's not bad we then had kavita ma'am coming in who spoke to us about you know how did i bring this into my school and how did i feel it and this was important and how could i see a pattern in changes of skill sets that are required for tomorrow so she brought in those skill sets and then came premlata ma'am who actually told us you know what put away everything try and do what you were doing algorithms uh, the algorithms work in a way that you know your uh, your existing uh, you know patterns or your existing uh, ways in which you teach can seamlessly uh, blend in the computational thinking skills therefore it became very doable so here we have a whole pattern of things of how to handle computational thinking in not only your classrooms but i think in a life itself computational thinking 
skills are those essential critical thinking skills that you need to uh, you, you need in it, it's it's a skill to lead your life itself so these are some of the things that we have noticed that when you are about to teach a new tool let's say you know we've been talking about coding grade 6 onwards when i talk about coding the first teacher to raise their hand is a language teacher especially the hindi or sanskrit teacher to say how am i going to do it well it's a mindset you're already doing it so what we do is we try and help them identify the patterns where are you doing this in your daily curriculums when you're teaching so it's only a step or two when you know added to your existing plans actually completes computational thinking they become the way you teach and learn because you as a teacher are using it more than your students as uh, learners because those learners are being told to learn they're not being made to learn when you immerse them into learning and you get them more engaged they automatically exercise most of these steps they are the way we think and live and similarly if we take this forward and we put it down to let's say uh, bringing it uh, into my subject area so you know once i've taught the teachers the skill that you know you don't have to really do coding what you need to do is you need to find out spaces where coding can happen in your curriculum teachers were more receptive they were more open to the idea of bringing that computational thinking or coding into their classrooms and once they did that and they gave that in the playground in the hands of their students they created beautiful stories and that's the success point of a teacher a teacher needs to empower and i'd like to end this with a quote from bill gates itself that himself that uh, if you are uh, you want to be a leader a 21st century leader or a future ready leader you need to empower others to do so so computational thinking can actually be taken as a major tool to empower others to so way live a life which is adaptable to all the kinds of changes that might happen with you and be successful at that i'll hand it back to you in the interest of time i'm going to pause here thank you very much meenakshi yeah, that's very short and crisp actually in fact very very good you know and you know thank you for saving some time for questions and i really like the way you ended actually you know with a quote that now i believe and i personally believe every teacher is a leader and a good leader create more leaders actually you know and you know empowering is the key thing for uh, creating more leaders thank you very much now we we will you know i, I want to thank all the all the panelists you know for those excellent presentations there is nothing like sharing the real experience you know that you know from practitioners who, are, who you know i mean you know your examples i'm sure that you know will inspire our participants because there are a lot of questions coming around you know these areas you know that you now how do i integrate uh, computational thinking in the classroom because it is not part of the curriculum at the moment actually and you gave lots of practical tips and you know examples of you know how that can be done so wonderful presentations thank you very much now we have uh, now i'll try and call out some questions for you and some of those questions are already answered but you know then i will see you know we, we received a few questions in advance actually so i'll start with those uh, questions so let me give me a second to okay the first question came from in, in fact now this question came in advance from uh, krishna mukherji from dps bopal and her question is you know there she sent two questions in fact and the first question is if we use computed the computational thinking in our lesson plan do we need to add other skills like critical thinking creativity or 21st century skills so i think you know i would direct this question to premalada and uh, probably you know anyone you know other 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 uh, participants also you know panelists also can add to that but premalada over to you yes thank you uh, just answering the question actually actually a lot of these things the actual answer to this question is there on that ppt which i showed you where we had uh, where i was trying to show you how the 21st century skill the skill set is demanding the adoption of ct and where we can see it is lying uh, it's laying its emphasis across all branches of academia so it is important that we catch them young and uh, to this point coming to specifically that point called on critical thinking uh, the way i look at it is that it is the analysis of facts for a judgment and we have elements like uh, interpretation being systematic inferences explanation problem solving so all these are key components to critical thinking 
and i uh, and i think i have made myself clear through the presentation the, through the activities how we blend it across to other subjects where these key points are being addressed thank you I thank if anybody would like to add on maybe yeah i think it would be a good idea that you know, meenakshi or kavita or you know i have a question to people the next person is to people so meenakshi and kavita and do you want to add anything to that i think kavita ma'am you're on mute in case you want to go first please go ahead sorry i'm yeah, sorry uh, so i think pranitha said it very beautifully but i think with uh, the main thing is that when you introduce it as some sort of a competition among students also a lot of creativity comes in to show one uh, another how a single act can be done in two diff three different ways also so that way a presentation some sort of you know collaboration is very important to bring in these aspects and a presentation helps a lot thank you and one line to that saying that you know i think the um, the trust that we need to place in the ability of a learner is extremely important and uh, that uh, the power of collaborative learning is something that is uh, that is not being leveraged to the uh, to the to the extent that it could so probably you know that's the kind of learning that we need to bring in uh, to bring in computational thinking into classrooms thank you thanks that thanks very much akrin sir okay now the second question from krishna mukherji again from dps is uh, i would like to direct this to vipul uh, see the question is you know how do we use computational thinking in the classroom for english as a subject can we collaborate it with this uh, syllabus vipul over to you uh, thanks govindan no i think this is a great question and i think it can be extended to why just english right how I mean how do we integrate it into all the languages right so let me first answer by uh, english so first of all a disclaimer i am not an english teacher or an expert in the language so as an english teacher you are you are the expert and you will be able to relate to it better and take it to your classroom so my my suggestion would be to look for pattern look for similarities look for exceptions to these they are all there right so few examples just to explain this you know while writing i'm always unsure if the word uses uh, should i be using ie or ei and then i go back to the rhyme right it was i before e except after c a lot of you may or would already know this but i was surprised when i used this in some training programs and not many had heard about it right obviously there are exceptions to these rules how it generally holds now there are many such rules in the language perhaps teaching them this way to the students will also help them make fewer spelling mistakes and when you talk of spelling mistakes it will be interesting to analyze spelling mistakes you know look at the data view for data oriented uh, centric view of it you may be surprised with the patterns that emerge and what students can learn from this and see how we compose an essay or a composition an article for a magazine it has a defined structure right i mean you always a simple thing would be everything has a beginning it has a middle and an end and what do you write in each section now let's extend this discussion to movies to books and see if there are similar patterns in those right i mean prem lata in her example earlier spoke about pattern in words now you know as a teacher uh, as an english teacher there are pat patterns in sentences how sentences are formulated there are grammar patterns patterns in verbs a simple thing would be simple like past participle when do i use ing in the verb so extending this to other subjects i mean let's just take geography for example i mean uh, since we just I don't know if uh, monsoon in is ever going away this year, but uh, if we have them look at the rainfall data for past several years, the students look at the rainfall data, have them analyze it, let them look for patterns, and let them forecast of how it will be. Let them find out which years were uh, El Nino years, which year were La Nino years, right? So I mean, let them look for these and exp and come up with the answers for this, and maybe they'll have a better understanding of this, right? So there are many many ways, and I'm I can. keep on giving you examples from other subjects as well and i think it is very easy to integrate this i think it's just a different perspective of looking at it and some of it is something which you already may be doing thanks govind thank you thanks uh, thank you vipul that that's a very useful perspective actually i think in it is as uh, someone mentioned already i think computational thinking is becoming a multidisciplinary subject you know it is not limited to computing it can be integrated with any subject in fact you know because everything we do today is uh, is a digital or uh, you know related to computer 
So it is a good perspective, actually. You know, I have an, a, a, another interesting question. This question is coming from Chetan. And the question says that, you no, know, can you, in simple language or simple example, can you differentiate critical thinking, creativity, and computational thinking? So probably, Vipul, you, you can start with that, and you know, then I'll also add Kavitha to add to that. So in very simple example, can you differentiate computational thinking, creative uh, creativity, and uh, critical thinking? Uh, Govind, and if I may, I think Premra Lata already spoke about some of it on her in her slides. And uh, if okay. she would like to take this, maybe I can, uh, or I can go on. But I think Lata, would you like to take this? Uh, the thing is that we find a lot of uh, uh, when you say computational thinking, it embeds all these aspects into it. That is the critical thinking part of it, the creativity part of it. So everything put under one umbrella. That is why I was showing you by way of those examples where children reason it out. Now, what looks good for me might not be the same for somebody else. I was also talking at different cognitive levels also. The way I my kid looks at it would not be what X kid will look at it. So again, that creativity difference is there. That intellect difference is there. But it is that there is no one-time formula for the entire thing, right? So uh, this uh, this is my take on it. Thank you, Hemlata. I think you know you also, uh, I know you you also mentioned. I remember in your presentation very nicely you put it, the four C's of 20, 21st century skills. You know, communication, critical thinking, collaboration, and creativity. And you also mentioned that no, I think you know we should include. Computation yes. as a fifth skill. Very much. So we Very don't, much. don't need to differentiate. You know, this need to be seen as a uh, as a fifth skill, which Get goes it. along with the rest of the uh, the the four C's. Exactly. Actually. I think yeah, that's that's very good. I think so. I'm looking at any more questions. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I I see. We still have about 465 participants on the call. We are already running late by seven minutes. So uh, I'm not sure. I don't. I can't see any more questions on my mobile, but I'm just looking at uh, the. Okay, I, I do have a question coming from uh, Preeti. Help me to put that relay back it on my mobile. I think you know one more question. We'll wrap it up. How should you know the next question is you know I I, I don't know who asked this question, but you know I'll I'll ask this question in any case. How should we implement this and get students interested? When I think you know that now, how how should we implement computational thinking in the classroom? I think that's what the questioner want to know. I think you know that now that issue has been already addressed by many of us. But if you want to, if any one of you want to add anything to that, that will be useful. And with that, you know, I think you know we'll close. We have already running uh, over time by about uh, eight minutes already. There was one interesting question. Oh, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, please, 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 please. Okay, so uh, I do this with uh, teachers, and I'm sure if it works with teachers, it's going to work uh, wonderfully with students as well. What I tell them is uh, I, I just take some props uh, with me when I go for uh, this session, and I tell them, you know, we're going to get hungry during this session. So why don't we do something? Let's make something, keep it, and, uh, you know, keep it handy so that, you know, whenever we are hungry, we know where to pick it up from. So uh, the problem statement here is make yourself something with the given uh, you know, items and uh, create something so that you're able to eat it when required. So invariably, and but, 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 what you need to do is you need to note down everything that you're doing, okay? So if you're getting up from your table to come to my table to get the resources, you need to record everything. So they literally have to uh, write steps of whatever they are doing, coming to my table, picking up bread, jam, uh, going back to their table, take a knife, apply it, and uh, you know keep it ready, wrap it uh, with a, uh, you know cover it safely so that when they're hungry, it's available. So if I have a longish session of about three hours and I'm not giving them a real break break or just giving them a bio break, they have enough to eat and they have prepared it themselves. So they have solved their own problems. And then I deciphered this into the four steps of computational thinking. So it's, it's as simple as that. This is my icebreaker or activity for uh, you know computational thinking. Of course, there are many. Lata Mama, I'll let you take it. Yeah, yeah. There was one interesting question. Maybe we uh, we can end with that. I found it interesting. 
how can we empower parents too as they happen to be the most important teachers to bring out the best in a child a uh, very relevant question i guess it was very nice yeah absolutely and then i think you know, the answers are absolutely spot on there is nothing yeah. like you know, that no getting children doing something in the classroom you know activity based learning what we call so i think you know that's a way to get children involved like in fact so thank you very much we run out of time we have a few more questions coming in but i think you know, we'll try and reach out to those uh, uh, people it's already 10 minutes past our scheduled time so i want to take this opportunity to thank our panelists uh, for all your great presentations and you know great involvement and i also want to thank all the participants for making it to the event because it's always uh, a challenge that you not know, doing something like this online how many people are going to be interested in it and i and i was seeing at the peak you know we had around 570 people and you know then a few dropped out you know when we uh, you know we were about to finish it but i i believe it's a great uh, you know event and thank you all for your participation i just want to say that you know that you no know, as i mentioned in the beginning this is part of a series of webinars we are doing and our next webinar is going to be on let me look at the date uh the next webinar is going to be on 21st of uh, october and the topic we are going to deal is uh what ma what really matters in optimum use of teaching and learning resources in online classes i think it's a very very relevant topic because all, you know most of most of the teachers are using online content these days actually and uh, it's a very important topic so i hope to see you uh, if not everyone many of you in that webinar so with those few words i would like to conclude thank you very much bye bye